Great. OK, well, thank you, everybody, for coming. We're excited about presenting our predict a pie with AI session to everybody. So the first thing I wanted to talk briefly about is just why AI? Why are we talking about AI today? What are we hoping to teach you? And why do we think it's important for you to learn it? And I'm sure a lot of you have seen numbers like this, that there's all kinds of danger from automation. There's all these jobs are being taken over by robots. And that is certainly one factor, but it goes a little deeper than that. It's not just about jobs being replaced and you have to, to become coders instead. It's more about working alongside AI. There's actually a growing body of research that just finds that AI is one of a handful of inventions that are really poised to affect all industries, all sectors of society at the exact same time. And that, and that opens up new avenues of invention and problem solving as kind of a general purpose technology. But because of that, it has an even kind of larger impact on the economy uh, as a kind of a new method of invention that's going to reshape the nature of how we do things. And that, that's why we believe at Steam Labs that AI literacy is even more important than coding skills because everybody is going to have to know how to work alongside AI. So what do we mean by that? Well, we're trying to build a society that it, it has a human-centric AI, which means that it's our assistant, not a replacement. That scary slide with all of the jobs being replaced by AI, we'd rather see a society where AI is being shaped to help us, to assist us in our jobs and help us to do better for each other um, rather than being replaced by it. And there's kind of three key pieces to that. There's the um, understanding what kinds of problems can be solved by an AI. And then there's understanding how to frame those problems so that they can be solved by AI, kind of shaping those problems. We're going to do a bunch of that today. And then understanding what kind of data is needed for the AI to do that, because AI at its core is really about data and figuring out how to, how to train these models. So one kind of barrier to this is a Deloitte survey found of, um, of over 1,000 Canadians they surveyed, only 4% actually reported they were confident explaining what AI is and, and just how it works. And of course, you can't use something as a tool if you don't understand it. So that's our primary goal here. We want to help you understand it and be able to explain it so you can use it as a tool. The next kind of goal we have for you is that we want you to be able to demand responsible AI from companies. So there's a quote from this book that I love, um, Yuval Noah Harari, where he says that what is gonna, what's going to happen? It's a question he's posed. What's going to happen to society, politics, and daily life when non-conscious but highly intelligent algorithms, AIs, know us better than we know ourselves? What happens to us when these machines know us better than we know ourselves? Well, we've seen some negative results of that already. Um, I'm sure you've seen YouTube's recommendations. Um, and here's an article, The Next Web, that was reported by developers who worked on their recommendation engine that the recommendations are toxic. They're not actually helpful for society because they've optimized these algorithms for YouTube to get more views, not to be your helper, your assistant. So there's another quote there. Everywhere you turn on the internet, there's a supercomputer playing chess against your brain and it's gonna win a lot, a lot more often than not. So, well, yeah, and that's that leads to this, like <laughs> these AI engineers perhaps, and these companies are perhaps so preoccupied on whether or not they could do this thing, they, they need to stop and think whether or not they should. And that sometimes is gonna take some pushing. This is another quote from Deloitte. Deloitte, if, if you're not aware of them, they're a big consulting agency. They, they work with businesses to help them implement AI and other technologies. And this is a quote from them in a report they did on, on Canada's AI imperative, just saying that it's vital for Canada's businesses and governments to work together to help Canadians better understand AI and develop the controls, rules, and practices necessary to address legitimate concerns about the impact of AI on our society. So even business knows that this kind of AI run amok, making bad decisions for society is not a good idea, but it's gonna take you, the general public, 
to push for, for good policies from governments and from companies. So that's our second goal for you from this workshop and others that we have. So how do we do this? Today, you will be a baker. So to predict a pie. <laughs> so we're gonna have you role play and we want you to pretend to be a baker in a, in a, uh, a restaurant that you're opening up and you wanna come up with some new innovative pie recipes to make your restaurant stand out from the crowd. But you've way too many ingredients. You can't just randomly throw them together and see if they make a good pie or not. So you, you're gonna get some help from an AI to choose those ingredients to combine them into delicious pies. So how do we do that? We're gonna build a neural network. So neural network, you may have heard the term, but this is, this is a, at the core of, of modern AI. And these are really inspired by human brain neurons where each neuron in a neural network makes a little small decision and combining all of these small decisions into a network combines to be able to make larger decisions and make, make um, uh, good decisions. So we're gonna do that. We've got an activity here if you go to this URL and maybe Brenda or someone can put this into the chat so you can go there directly. So we, we've created this online activity where we can, we can explore this together. So the first thing we're gonna do, um, so let me just flip my screen over to here. So when you arrive here, you'll have some instructions, but let's go over together to the test a pre-trained model here first. So now it's going to display an already pre-done AI model for you. Um, and so what does that mean? This, this is a neural network that has been trained on data, on recipes, 2,585 recipes to be exact, of different kinds of pie recipes, sweet pies, quiche, pizza, savory, and other, other being all the kind of gross things that don't really fit into a nice pie. And you can see, you can choose any ingredients, turn them on, and the AI, all these little neurons combine together to make a prediction of this, is this a good pie or not? Sugar and pineapple? No, not really. So explore this on your own for a bit and give it some feedback. Click on this yes or no to say whether you agree with the prediction that it's, that it's, it's come up with. And you'll also see um, that up at the top here, there's a find recipe button as well. So you can tell it what kind of recipe you want for your, re your restaurant. Do you want sweet ones or quiche or pizza or, or just totally random ones? And just tell it to find you one. Click on find. And there it found something for me. It's a crust, honey, and strawberry. And yeah, so it says that's a sweet pie. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. And just go through, try and find ones that you don't agree with because those edge cases where you disagree with the AI are, uh, are pretty useful for learning about how it thinks. And then when you find something for your restaurant, you can save it too. So there's a save recipe button there you can click on. So maybe I want to adjust this a little bit. Crust honey strawberries. Maybe I'll add in something a little different to that too. Maybe put some pecans in that too. Great. And I'll save that recipe for my, my, uh, my restaurant. Strawberry pecan pie. There we go. And yeah, that, that sounds like a sweet pie to me. So I'll give you a few minutes to play with that. Find some recipes. And while you're doing that, I'm gonna switch over to the stats page. We can see how people are doing because this has all of the data from that you're creating right now by exploring this AI. Okay, pretty good. So, so far it's got like a 91% accuracy, a few that have, it's asked us to, to reclassify. Yeah, I agree. Crust, honey, and pineapple. That does not sound like a super good pie. That's another for sure. <laughs> See if we can find some others. Maybe I'll look around for some more recipes while we're doing it too. Someone agreed that the uh, Hawaiian pizza was actually pizza. I disagree with that. <laughs> oh, interesting. Hawaiian pizza. I'm not a believer. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Hawaiian pizza. Hmm. 
Yeah, so the crust, pineapple, tomato, cheese, and ham. That's a pretty controversial one, actually. So that's uh, so so Mo, do you want to tell us why you don't think that's a pizza? Um, for me, I'm pretty uh, traditional when it comes to my food taste. So I don't mm. like mixing sweet and savory. Uh -huh. So for me, pineapple only belongs in in desserts or it's a dessert itself. So that's a no from me. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, that's a reasonable, that's reasonable. A lot of people like Hawaiian pizza. Somebody clicked yes. Does whoever, uh, does somebody else want to chime in with why they think that is a pizza? It's okay if you don't as well. I actually personally do like that combination of, of flavors. I think that the, the sweetness counteracts the saltiness of the, of the other ingredients. And it kind of makes a new uh, delicious combination. You can see that um, when one AI is making decisions for everyone, you could see how that could be a bit of a, of a, a inappropriate use though. Oh, ah, yeah, there's, there's another one that we have some disagreements on too. Crust with onions, corn, and ham. Yeah, three, two people thought it was a good savory pie and uh, one person thought not, that's another. Yeah, I could see that too. And actually that's interesting. So ham, there are a lot of people because of religious restrictions who actually don't eat pork products at all. So this AI recommending that pizza to them, not uh, with pork in it, that's not really very good for them at all, is it? Oh, and there we have another one, crust, tomato, egg, and shrimp. 50% thought, yep, that's quiche. 50% thought, no, actually that's a savory combination. Yeah, that's a good point too. There's different, different people might classify something differently. It's another ingredient in there that some people have shellfish allergies, shrimp. That could be extremely inappropriate for some people. If you are entirely relying on an AI to make your meal choices for you and you're allergic to shellfish and it gave you, gave you a shrimp pizza, that's entirely inappropriate, isn't it? Uh, yeah, there's some more coming in there. And any, anybody think of some other reasons that recipes that are trained on data. So remember where these came from. So we had 2,500 recipes that were, were, this AI was trained on. And those, we got those from somewhere. Those, those came from Toronto. Those came from the, the cultural tastes here in Canada in Toronto. Can anyone think of any other reasons that this AI may not be appropriate for other people, perhaps other people elsewhere in the world? Because the recipes that come from here maybe are different than, than recipes that are from other areas. One issue that we could have here too is that these ingredients, these are ingredients that we have on hand here, but perhaps other areas of the, of the world, maybe they don't have these ingredients because they're not available. And maybe there's other ingredients that they, they enjoy cooking with and that are readily available, but they just aren't in this AI. So there's another reason why perhaps you might want to, uh, the one AI's um, outputs may not be appropriate for all people. So what's the, what, so what's the answer? <laughs> how, do we, how do we fix this? How, how do we uh, create something that is appropriate for you? And one answer to that is build your own. So that's the thing we're gonna do next. So, what we want to do here is there's, there's a couple of steps we want to do this in. The first step that we're going to do is I'm going to build a neural network here and I want you to follow along and build a neural network that's the same as mine. And then after, so that you can understand how to build a neural network. And then once you have that knowledge by following along with me, then I want you to, to clear it and make your own. 
And you can either, you can choose the goal of your neural network. You can make it make delicious pies for your restaurant. But also if you want to, you can make it predict anything you want. We're gonna do a, an exercise at the end where we're gonna go back to that YouTube example too, so that you can see some other things that could be created by neural networks. And by building this on your own, then you'll learn more about how the inner parts of it worked. So this model here, when you, you notice when you're turning on and off things here, these green dots in the middle are lighting up and, and, turn, and, and turning off. Those are the nodes or the neurons inside of the neural network. And they're all making decisions based on the, the inputs to them. So each of those is kind of like a, a combination that the network has learned that is interesting combination that when they go together, they, they can create some kind of output. They can lead to these outputs. But when we look at this pre-trained model, it's hard to know, well, what does that green dot there mean? We don't know, as, and the AI researchers don't know either, because we, we told it to just find the patterns in the data and try and put, put together something. So what we're gonna do is learn a little bit more about that by building our own network, and we're gonna assign our own neurons to, to make the decisions for us. So the first thing we're gonna do is we've got, just like our test of pre-trained one, we've got our input ingredients and we've got our output predictions. So first thing we're gonna do is just add, add an ingredient. So let's try cherries. And then we're gonna add uh, the other side. We're gonna make that predict to be a sweet pie. And then what you can do next to connect those is just drag from this dot here over to the plus sign. And that'll indicate that cherries is positively activating the sweet pie. And then when I test it, I turn this on, great. Sure enough, that activates that, perfect. Now the next thing though, is we, we need more than that. We need more than just cherries for a sweet pie. So let's get some other stuff in there. So let's get some sugar. We're gonna need some kind of sweetener in there. So put that in there, wonderful. So now it needs both these, those things. If it doesn't have one of them, it doesn't activate. Perfect, okay. Now, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add something to negatively activate that. So I'm gonna do eggs for mine. And eggs is not gonna make a good sweet pie. So this time I can take that same dot, I can drag it over to the negative. So what that does now is that if eggs are an input, this is going to negatively deactivate sweet pie. So now, even though I've got my cherries and sugar to activate it, eggs is deactivating it and I've got no sweet pie activated at all. Perfect. Okay, but now that this, and now we can just grow from here. So I'm gonna add some more ingredients and kind of wire them up and have different outputs. Uh, at this point, you, you can follow along, but as soon as you kind of get, get the idea, you can add your own ingredients to it too. We're gonna get it a little bit more complicated in a minute, um, but I'm just gonna add some ingredients for now. So let's add some other things. You remember that there was a quiche option in the, in the pre-trained model. So let's do that, let's do quiche. So now there's some other things I'm gonna need in there. Let's make a really simple quiche with just some onions. There we are. And so I can now have my eggs. I'll turn all these off while I'm experimenting. I have my eggs and my onions activate my quiche, perfect. And then I probably also want onions to deactivate the sweet pie. That's not a good sweet pie ingredient. Great. So now I can turn that on and I've got my quiche and I can have my sugar and cherries kind of deactivate my quiche. You can see the lines start to get pretty full pretty quick. But by adding them one by one, you understand what they do. And you can see, see them in action as each thing activates and deactivates. So in this particular model here, this is, this is really simple. Uh, but if you remember over in our pre-trained model, we had more in the middle here. There was more decisions that need to be made in the middle there. And the reason for that is that um, there's sometimes more complex decisions that need to be made as a kind of in-between layer. So I've got, if I've, if I've got, um, uh, some more basic ingredients than just this, I can put together, I can use a, a middle layer to, to uh, detect those combinations. 
So let's now wire it up to make um, some kind of in-between combinations here. So I'll add a middle layer here. And for this one, I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna have it detect a crust and put together that. So what do I need in a crust? I'm gonna need some butter and I'm gonna need some flour. And that's going to create a crust for me. Um, and then I still want a sweet pie at the end, but now I need something else. I need a filling in there too. So I'm gonna put in the middle here, I'm gonna put a sweet filling. Or actually let's make it a fruit filling, fruit filling. And so now that I can have some cherries again, and some sugar again, and I can have those two go over here to detect that combination. And then these two combine to make a sweet pie. Marvelous. So I need all those things to, act, to activate my endpoint. Wonderful. But now what I can do is I can start to make it more intelligent in these, these uh, um, in-between steps. So now I said fruit filling. I've only got one cherry, one fruit though. I've only got cherries. So what about other fruits? So let, let me say, let, let's do blueberries in here. So now when I put blueberries into my fruit filling here, I try it out. Great, I want a blueberry fruit filling. Ah, but it's not activating. Do so you remember I said that by default, it's gonna need all of these input things to trigger this, but some things are more important than other things. Sugar, is that thing. We always need sugar to make it a fruit filling, but we don't need both cherries and blueberries to make it a fruit filling. So what we do there is that now we can adjust how important each one of these inputs is by clicking on the plus sign itself. If I click on that, now I've got my weights of how important each one of these things are. And you can see these are percentages. So the, by default, it assigns equal weight. So it needs all of them to activate that. But if I don't want it to need all of those, then I can turn up the weight. I can just drag on this, turn that up. So I can make this up 67. So now you can see that sugar and one of the other two things will combine to activate fruit filling. And you can see that turn green. So it's, it's live. And when I click off of here, I can activate that now with either. But also crucially, if I just have cherries and blueberries, that doesn't activate it because those two numbers, 33 plus 33, that's only 66. That's not enough. That's not enough to be to reach that 100% threshold to activate that fruit filling. And that's by design. I don't, that's not a tasty fruit filling, just cherries and blueberries. It might be a little sour. Some people might like it, but that's, that's for you to tune your network and turn, turn it into something that works for you. For me, I need some sugar in my fruit filling. So I can do that and then I can get to my sweet pie in that way. And then I, I can also um, build this up with other kind of um, uh, ingredients and fillings. So what, why don't you take a couple of minutes now to, to do this and, and to create another filling type. So something that you like for your, res your restaurant. You probably have an idea now after playing with those for a bit. Did you like the pizzas? Did you like the quiche? you like the, the savory pies, add another kind of filling type and then add some ingredients that might go into that filling and play with the weights until it can activate that filling type um, and turn into the pie type that you want at the end. So I'll give you a few minutes to do that. And I'll program one my own while you're doing that. My favorite is custard. So I'm gonna make a custard filling personally. And I wasn't even in the pre-trained one. So that's another good reason to do it. I want my own neural network that has my preferences in it.
Yeah, that works pretty well. And I can decide too, do, do I want custard and fruit to be separate? Because so I can, I can, um, um, oh yes, right. My, my uh, sweet pie isn't activating there. So I need to adjust those weights. So crust is the super important one in this case. I'll turn that up to 67. There we go. And leave fruit and custard both at 33. And I've got my sweet pie. And now I can decide, I can think, well, is that delicious if I've got fruit in there as well? And actually, I think it is. So if I didn't, so I could, I could deactivate it with that. I could say fruit filling is actually going to deactivate that. But personally, I think fruit and custard goes really well together in the sweet pie. So I can activate that. I could also make a different classification. I could say, hey, actually, custard fruit pie, that's super awesome. <laughs> so maybe these ones are if I get if I have both there that's even better so now if I have if I turn off my uh, turn off my fruit filling I haven't done this combination before so a bit of troubleshooting <laughs> so I've got my custard filling I got my crust oh yeah I got to change my weights again here. Make that 67. Or so. So that's my sweet pie. But then as soon as I get some fruit in there too, now I've got a custard fruit pie. That's even better. Nice. Beautiful. So one of the, the key things that, um, when, you, uh, when we're programming them, we wanted to generalize to new recipes and figure out stuff that we don't already know. So you, you remember when we trained that pre-trained model, I told you there were 2,500 recipes that we put into there. With that many ingredients, about 20 ingredients, there's like 500,000 different possible combinations. We only trained it with 2,500. How does it know all the rest? It's because of all of these combinations in the middle. It's because of all of these, we're forcing it to find the patterns in the data that we do feed it, which makes it able to generalize and actually able to see what it thinks about new, new combinations because it learned what those patterns mean. So if I were to add in more fruits in here and I had some data on some of those fruits, it could automatically learn that those are good in the fruit filling, which then automatically learns that's good in a sweet pie and also in a custard fruit pie. That's the, the way that that can extend itself. So does anybody have any trouble setting up the, the, the pattern that they want in there? You can just say it in the chat there. I'll see if another chat pops up. Maybe um, no, everyone's working through that well. Okay, awesome. That's great. Okay, so then let's talk about. I think I told you that we were going to come back to that YouTube example because now this this is a kind of toy example coming up with something for your. Uh, your recipe, your uh, for recipes for your bakery, your, your restaurant. So now let's go back to that YouTube example. So let me stop sharing for just a moment. We talked about it, like YouTube recommendations can be, can be toxic. Now why? Why can they be toxic? Let me show you an example. My presentation here. Okay. All right, so I've got some video recommendations on my screen. So 
here's uh, here's nine videos that uh, could be uh, could be um, um, suggested by YouTube, shall we say? So I have nine different options here that are, are, are shown to a user. So now YouTube's recommendation engine, it's got an AI behind it. And what, what do you think their goal is? What do you think YouTube's goal would be in showing you some video recommendations? Why, why are they showing you recommendations rather than just letting you search on your own? Does anyone have any ideas about that? They'd like to share? Why might they be doing that? Because on, on, on Google, I, I have to type something in to start. I got a blank page to start with. And I, I, type, I have to type something to get any kind of results. But on YouTube, they give me this pile of videos that you might want to watch. So the thing that they've optimized their AI for is engagement time. So YouTube makes its money from showing ads to, to you, the viewer. And the longer you watch videos for, then the more ads they can show to you, and then the more money they can make from those ads. So what they, their end result is in showing you these videos is they want to predict which ones you're going to watch <laughs> so that you'll sit there and watch the videos and also watch the ads, and they make more money. So they use an AI to do this. So how about we program that AI using our tool here? I've got nine different videos here and uh, that are nine different possibilities um, of what it could show me as a, as a recommendation of what video to watch next. So we need to choose which one is, is best for this particular user that's watching it. So what does YouTube already know? What do they already know about you when you've, uh, you've been on YouTube and you've been watching a few videos already? What, is it, what does YouTube know about you? What's our kind of input ingredients to our, our neural network? I don't have my, let me get my chat window up here. Yeah, what videos do you watch? Your interest, amazing. Yeah, and a good, great question. If you click them, it trains the AI that you like those kinds of videos. So good. Yeah, exactly. So it figures out what kinds of videos you watch. Exactly, and those are kind of like those middle layers in our AI. Remember, we're detecting fruit fillings, we're detecting custard fillings. Those are the middle layers. It's what kinds of videos are you watching? What's the similarities? What are the things in common about these videos? So let's play that game. So here's, let's, let's say that these are some possibilities and then let's think of some things in common across these videos so it can figure out what one to show you next. So what's, uh, just looking at these, what uh, just, there's, uh, there's some patterns in here. So there's kind of, for every video that's on the screen here, there's two others that are like it in some way. So what's, uh, what are some guesses on some of the things that are, are similar here, the kind of interests that are in here? Yeah, good one. There's, an, there's an animals theme happening here. The top three on the top there, there's some animals across all three of those. And then you, you found the other main one, which is cooking. So this, one, this grid here is kind of like, that's a, that's a starting point. <laughs> I kind of used me as a starting point and then did some searches. Uh, one of my daughters, her favorite thing is the Trini macaroni pie. <laughs> so I put that in the middle and kind of branched off from there into different things. So we've got kind of uh, some branches here. So yeah, we've got the cooking is kind of on both axes here. And then up in this direction, it's animals. So now it goes into homemade dog food and cooking. There's a combination of those interests. And I've got some animals across the top. And then uh, across the middle, um, there's, there's not, it is also cooking along here. And then, um, so what, what do you think the, 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 the common thing is over here on the, on the right-hand column? 
what's the common thing across those three? Parents, exactly. This is parenting. Again, this is me. What can I say? I'm a parent. <laughs> so is there's a Mother's Day connection, food into parenting. And then we've got some others on here. Great. Okay, so let's let's program some of that now in our in our network. So I put this in here. I've got all nine videos here as an input. And then I've got all nine videos over here as well as an output because it's basically what it needs to do. It figures out for ones that you've already watched, what are the common interests so it can recommend a new one for you to watch. And they're the same because they're also the same categories. But of course, if you watch the lion swimming video, it's not gonna recommend lion swimming. It already knows that you like that, but you are also already watched that. So they're not getting anything. I'm not gonna click on that, I already watched it. So they're not getting anything out of that, but there's gonna be some related ones that are a similar category, a similar pattern that it can do. So let's program that. Let's see, maybe I can find my screen that has it on it. There we go. Okay. So let's let's make some patterns here. So I'll made, make a hidden layer in the middle and let's put in our, our pattern. So, so the first one you said was, was cooking. Next one you said was animals. Um, I don't think we can see your screen, Andy. Oh, really? Okay. Let me just maybe, I, oh, probably because I was sharing a different screen. Let me just reshare. Is that better? Can you see the screen now? Yeah, great. Okay. So I've got cooking, I've got animals, and I've got parenting. So what, what should I, now where should I, uh, you help me, where, where should I connect here? I want to predict based on my, what video I've watched, what one it should recommend. I'll look at the chat here for somebody's suggestion. What I should connect here. You're the experts now. You know how to wire up neural networks. You just programmed one. You know everything about this. So where, what line should I draw here? Yes, lion swims, convince parents to put, put about uh, a, Lion swim. Okay, lion swims. We're gonna. Oops, where did my mouse go? There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna connect lion swims to animals. Excellent. And then convince parents for puppy. We'll connect that to parenting. Perfect. Homemade dog food to animals. Awesome. Where? What other connections should I make here? How about uh, cooking by the river? Really, that's oh, kind of the name. <laughs> that one's easy. Put that to cooking. I kind of, in my, my chart there, I kind of had another one in mind in the left-hand column that it was things about the earth, just things about nature. So I'll, I'll just add that one in too, nature. I'll look for the chat for, for one more thing to wire up and then I'll do a bunch. So someone else chime in in the chat, one other connection I should make. Yeah, Trini to cooking, deliciousness. Okay, awesome. And now I can, I can connect up some other stuff. So lion swimming, that's also nature. Whoops, not what I meant to do, nature. Cooking by the river, that's also nature. There we go. Flat earth proof, well, that's also nature. Mm, homemade dog food, that's also cooking. Maybe parenting, no, not really. Trini macaroni pie, for me it's parenting. Maybe not for everybody. Danger food, that is certainly cooking. Convince parents about a puppy. Well, that's also animals, isn't it? 
Mother's Day meal, cooking and parenting. Awesome. One big mistake that ruins children. Definitely parenting. Awesome. Okay, and now what I have to do is I have to change these weights. So I turned on Lion Swims. Didn't line up, it didn't light up any interest. What should I do? Hmm. It's not lighting anything up. So the green line is there, but sh shouldn't that be animals and nature? What do I do? Yes, exactly. Weights up to 100 because I want any one of these to trigger this completely. So I can do that by just cranking all these weights up to 100 because it told you that once it hits that 100% threshold, it triggers. Yes, beautiful. See, now you know how to program neural networks. This is actually how they work inside. Parenting, just crank them all up. Amazing. Crank these all up. Awesome. Now I can just do the same on the other side. So I can just now connect up all my cooking ones, cook by the river, homemade dog food, shiny macaroni pie, danger food, Mother's Day meal. Oop. There we go. And animals, got my lion swims, got my homemade dog food. I got my parenting. Uh, oops. Oh, and puppies. Puppies. And then parenting. Got my convincing the parents to buy a puppy. Got my Mother's Day meal. I've got the mistake that ruins children. Great. And nature. I've got my lion. Got my cooking by the river. Got my homemade dog food. Mm, that's it. Great, amazing. Look at that. And then I have to adjust my weights here as well. So by default, look what it's doing there. Why is lion swimming lighting up? I didn't adjust any weights yet. Why is that? That seems to be working. It's only that one. How come? Any ideas why that one's lighting up? I'll just watch the chat, see if anyone has any ideas. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. Good guess. It inherits the weights from the middle nodes. Very good guess. But actually, nope, it defaulted them. It's because there's only two inputs on this one and it set them both to 50-50 because there's only two, so it made them equal. So it's only activating because both those interests have activated. So animals and nature activated that one because there were two inputs. There's only two inputs on that one. So that one happened to only have two that could trigger it. So since both of those are activated, that triggered it. And similar things happen here if it happens to activate um, all of their inputs. So cooking by the river though activates more because that's a cooking and nature combination. And so those combinations are, are lighting up these two as well because Trini macaroni pie and danger food, they're only cooking. So their only input is from cooking. So that lights up too. So I can play with these inputs and make different things light up when I get different things. Um, so I can get that. But now I said at the beginning that YouTube's recommendation algorithm was toxic. That was a, that was a bold headline that we looked at at the front um, that we said that, that, that YouTube's recommendation algorithms are toxic. There's one thing that we're missing in here, which is what's gonna make it toxic. 
And that is engagement. What ones am I gonna look at for the longest and watch the most ads for? So I'm gonna add another one here and say engagement or, or long engagement. So that what that means is I'm gonna watch that for a long time, the, the videos that um, that's activated for. And it, surprise, surprise, the ones that do that are not always ones that are good. This video about flat earth, proving that flat earth is, is real, that has a long engagement for a lot of different reasons. They've done some research into that. Even video, conspiracy theory videos that you don't agree with, if they're along your kind of interests, you'll click on them out of a bit of maybe outrage, maybe a bit of curiosity, but those are some of the most engaging kind of videos that you can see. So that flat earth proof one, the danger food, clickbaity kind of titles, a mistake that ruins children, those kind of things tend to tend to have long engagement because people are like, what is that? And they keep watching and they keep watching ads. So that those are those are long engagement ones. Um, and uh, so I can wire those up to here to mistake that uh, ruins children, flat earth proof, and danger food. Okay. So now, but this one, this isn't really an input though. This is actually, these are always long engagement for everybody. This isn't really an interest, right? So I'm actually gonna wire this up to every single one here. Anybody who watches anything will have long engagement with those types of videos. So I'm gonna do that, wire those up. And now I'm gonna adjust a couple of these weights here. So, okay, so now let's, let's see what happens now. So I'm going to, I, I've, I've watched a lot of cooking videos. I like to cook by the river. I like homemade, oh, that's not one, I like Trini macaroni pie. And I like Mother's Day meals. Um, so it's gonna activate cooking and, oh, right. And then this one, I need to change all these hundred percent. And I said that any of these videos would definitely trigger this. Okay, okay, there we go. Now let me turn these off, okay. So now look what happens when I, when I watch anything that has anything to do with cooking. Danger food lights up. Any one of them, danger food lights up. And with this tuning, I can have, um, um, if, if there's ones that don't have long, if, if these ones don't have uh, uh, long engagement, I can wire it up over like that. I can say, well, that one's not long engagement. That one's not long engagement. Now look what happened. I, I watch one video about cooking and it thinks I like cooking, I like parenting. And it suddenly activates all of these conspiracy theory videos that are slightly related because they have long engagement times. And, the, and when they were, when YouTube was kind of asked about this and uh, reporters were like, hey, why is this happening? They basically said, well, it's what the algorithm said that people like to watch, which is true, has long engagement time, but it's not necessarily a good thing for society. So by kind of programming this and figuring out yourself, like why this is happening, you can make informed kind of demands of companies and governments to have good policies around this, to, to actually um, pressure companies to, to change this, to, uh, to uh, change the way that they do these things. So that's, uh, that's our, 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 our uh, full circle example back to, the, to uh, YouTube. Um, so at this point, it's, it we really wanna just open it up uh, last few minutes for for discussion from you. So 
Um, this is, uh, you, you've learned a lot. Um, uh, so we, we'd love to hear from you now of just like what kind, what kind of, what thoughts you have on this um, and uh, um, yeah, what, what you thought of the things that you just learned. Um, in particular, it'd be great to have, um, if you think of any kind of ethical dilemma kind of things in your life that are around AI, if you want to discuss any of that, we, we certainly can. Um, I see in the chat, somebody chimed in that uh, they said that, yeah, that basically YouTube is kind of avoiding the responsibility by blaming the AI, uh, but they can only do that if they say that they don't understand it. So understanding how it thinks and kind of analyzing that middle, those middle layers and figuring out why it's making the decisions can be uh, a really important thing. Any, any other thoughts that people have on that, uh, on AI? About that. Okay, well then I think we'll do the 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 la the the post survey then, so we can just gather a bit more about what you've learned and what you like, um, and then we'll gather your uh, your contact information um, if, for further discussion. Um, so I'll I'll stop the recording uh, now. Uh, so. Thank you everybody for, for coming and participating. And uh, we'll post the survey link in a moment and we'll hang around now, but we'll, we'll stop the recording now. Thank you so much.